Well, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, changes, of course, as we all know. Um, well, this week, I guess all of the cruise ships are back into port, so that's exciting. So they have let people back in. Um, but yeah, there's still the, the travel uh, ban hasn't opened up, and I think everyone's still on the ground trying to figure out what the best solution is going to be, just for people that are are trying to make a living and uh, also balancing that out with safety. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with Gene earlier. This whole concept of safety and uh, Anthony is online too, so I want to get in on this as well. Safety is a bit. You know, we talked about this starting with, with Mark Twain, who said, you know, uh, he wrote a uh, story on the dangers of, of staying in bed, you know, because most people die in bed. You know, you're old, there's nothing going on, that's where, you, that's where it happens. You know, it's not, you know, yes, people die on the trains and the ships from the 1800s, but for the most part, we're going to be fine. You can go travel. I've traveled a good part of the world traveling. to show me you could live traveling for, for years at a time. You know, and so the world's a big, wonderful place, and there's a lot of good stuff out there, but yeah, you might get sick. And I got no virus, but it's not gonna stop me from cruising. You know, I don't know what I eat in Europe that that affected me one day from some market. I forgot where it was, but you know, stuff happens. I didn't stop eating. You know, and it's we, we've got this myth of safety that it, that somehow with the government's trying to convince us that we have to be perfectly safe. Uh, this virus, this disease, this crisis will not be over until we are perfectly safe. That to me is an illusion. There's no such thing as perfect safety. I and, and, yeah, I mean, I I agree with you, Greg. That the, already over. Well, there's no such thing as perfect safety. I think there's also recklessness. Uh, I don't agree with Mark Twain okay. in, in that quote. I, I really, I firmly don't agree with that. As far as most people die in bed, that's to me, that's just. That's not a helpful quote for, in, in my personal opinion, um, because most people that are in bed are sick. But uh, I do think I do, do still believe. What is it? Was it uh, Abraham Lincoln or was it Benjamin Franklin that said basically those that choose um, to have more safety than liberty don't deserve either? I understand where he's coming from there, and I think again and again we just we we really need to look at history and and be. Uh, try to isolate ourselves from this this one moment of fear that so many of uh, the people are living in. And of course, we're all a little scared. Unless you're crazy, you would you know you'd be crazy not to be a little fearful of this virus because there's no immunity to it. I don't believe that uh, they've been completely either honest or or correct in the fact of saying it's just people that are immune compromised. Not that that's good, but we all understand that they do have a higher risk. Um, Ultimately, uh, but I think you know we have seen enough healthcare workers pass away. God bless them. Um, that everyone should be tentative. However, how safe do you want to balance that scale of safety versus living life, or safety versus going into you know the back of the depression where we're going to be in line for rations? And um, you know, that's, I feel like that's really the question because people, you know, we're not in the same boat. I think this is one of the biggest quotes. We're not in the same boat. We're just suffering the same storm. Some people are in yachts, all those people with jobs that have money coming in that are standing on the totem on their, on their soapbox saying, we should lock down. We can't lose one life. Those are people with income. So if you're one of those people uh, listening now, I feel like you should really try to be empathetic to the single mom that has no income. Um, did you know I found out today that Florida, for instance, Florida has um, uh, over a million over a million uh, unemployment requests and only 40,000 filed paid claims. So 1.5 million have claimed uh, for unemployment in Florida alone and only 40,000 have been play paid since March. And these, I mean, we know half of America lives paycheck to paycheck. So those people that still have income that are standing on the soapbox and saying, we should stay locked down for safety of losing one life, it seems to me that that's really, really callous in not feeling the, what's really going on for the majority of America. They're living in their yacht on, on, on that boat. And then there's people in a dinghy that are drowning, literally, and worried about their house and worried about, you know, where their next paycheck's coming from, you know, and, and not, I don't think people are really weighing this out correctly. I think that they're erring on the side of safety and and most people that are doing that are they're safe. <laughs> they're not they're not in a bad position, you know. So that's yeah, uh, that yeah, to me yeah. that's sad. Well, that's a that's a great great series of points. Um, 
And I think we should, I think there's like two types of safety. You know, when we're on a ship, there's, there's actual safety, lifeboats, emergency procedures, you know, redundant systems. That to me is real safety. And I want all those things we can because that provides options that actually, you know, you never know when those things are going to save lives. But it's the myth of safety that, that's more ideological. Yeah. That uh, the government says, we're going to make you safe. I'm your next, you know, I'm your nanny. I will take care of you. If you just do what I say and stay in your home, you'll be safer. And we just found out that home is the greatest transmission point for this disease other than New York subways and buses. You know, so it, it's the, the lie, the, the myth of safety versus actual safety. So I'm absolutely with you. You know, I'm a flight instructor. I, you know, I taught flying. I love having redundant systems. And I've had things go wrong. I've been in actual emergencies in the air. Believe me, I know about, <laughs> about safety because I've been there. You did some of those things. I'm sure you've had emergencies on ships too. We have. But the point is, that's real safety. But yeah. We still go on ships. And I still, I'm going to be starting flying again as soon as I can afford it. And, and all these things can happen. But the myth, the myth of safety, the, the, the idea that someone can take care of you, that all of your, your fears can be answered if you just put your trust in government. That's the safety side. Yeah, and that worries me too. I and I, I think, you know, again, I understand the risks. I, I'm not immune to what's going on. I have an elderly father that's compromised. I have a husband who apparently males are really having a problem with this. And, um, you know, that that's it, it doesn't matter what age. Um, you know, I have I have people I care about and I have a ton of friends that are, you know, in a compromised position. So I get it. But like we have to look back at all the time when government tells us that they're going to take care of us, that never ends up happening. If you really look back at why our forefathers made this incredible constitution was in order to, to make sure we stay free and we don't get controlled because it's just such a repetitive, it's such, it's almost like, gosh, we're doing this again, again, you know, and I, I know people get so, and I, I understand, I'm not really right or left. I really am not. I, I'd like both of them to be able to come together in both reasonable areas. Like, I believe we definitely, yeah, we're gonna try that at o'clock, actually. Yeah? I think we definitely <laughs> need to, yeah. we need to, we, we would be best to compromise both, but it, there always has to be like one side or the other side. And I don't believe that it has to be that way. You know, I mean, for instance, I totally, uh, I, I hear again and again, let's say there was um, this, uh, the story about a woman who had a business south of the border just a few miles past the border into Mexico and you know her there was a drug cartel that mistaken her company because they had SUVs as another drug cartel and they wiped them out and this happened just recently you can google it and what she said to the newscaster when uh, the US newscaster was interviewing her saying you know what would you tell Americans and she said I would tell them to keep their guns because those are the first things that they took away from us the government took away our guns and now the cartel owns everything and no one can defend themselves and so that was exactly what the second amendment right um was was implemented for and people think it's i understand the danger again it's a weighing it out it's risk reward i mean do we hate the fact that do i feel like gun rights need to be a little bit more controlled i do but do i feel like you should give it up for the government i do not you know so i kind of feel on both those risk reward sides and i feel the same way with this is that do i understand it's risky i do but i don't like how people are making uh, the single moms and friends. I have single friends that that just bought houses that were in the service industry that have no way to get unemployment, that have no income whatsoever coming in. And when they do get unemployment, it's going to be like ten dollars because they were working on tips, you know. And what are these people supposed to do? Just just go into complete and utter economic distress because uh, people are afraid that they're gonna someone's gonna get their grandmother sick, which is a, a huge guilt trip. I don't like I hate when I see posts like that when they say oh and then you're gonna go visit the store and then you're gonna get my grandmother sick well your grandmother should stay at home and you should be helping her stay isolated like I'm doing for my father so take responsibility <laughs> but, but don't cut off my single friend's income so she's gonna lose her condo that she just worked her ass off to get you know so it's risk reward everything is like on that balance scale you go one far too far in one direction you lose all your freedoms you go far too far in one direction we're going to end up in ration lines for meat i mean they just closed 
three meat distribution packs because uh, they couldn't handle the staff and some people got sick with the coronavirus and everyone's shutting down everything. There's no one to sell stuff to. You know, these are real long-term effects to closing the economy for a long time and to closing travel, which is a huge industry. I mean, I don't want to play the victim, but you can't imagine how bad my life has become because of this. I mean, I don't want to say poor me, but I'm going to say it right now. Like, God, I worked my ass off. And yeah, poor me. And the amount of money that I've put in and, and been promised. And when I partnered with this company, I mean, that's all down the drain. Like, I, I don't get anything for all the hard work I've put in. And it doesn't look like I'm going to be in travel any longer. I mean, they've shut it down. So they've taken a complete industry away from me, you know. And I don't, I don't think sa safety is where we want to go all the time. You should say that. The, the Supreme Court actually ruled that there's a constitutional right to travel. And so they're even violating your individual personal rights to your own livelihood. Um, that's a great question. Let's see if we can work on that somehow. And there's, there's plenty of things to do. I mean, I, I wish I could hire everybody at Action Radio and just have you out there reporting and doing things and writing. And, and hopefully we'll get there to that point somehow. Hopefully enough people will share the show. We get the numbers that we need. The income comes in. And then we'll be able to, to, to profit share with all the folks that work with us here. I mean, that, that's my goal. But until then, yeah, travel. I don't know how to get travel going. I did my best. I wrote a... Uh, long-term and yeah and right and I would I would beg everyone that feels that strongly that's shaming people on social media for wanting to get back to work I would really beg them to look inside and say if I was that single mom or that single person that had income that was dependent on actual work and I wasn't getting a paycheck if I wasn't retired receiving Social Security you know if I if I wasn't in this safe position like I said we're not all in the same boat we're just weathering the same storm we've got a uh, half the population are in dinghies sinking and it's only going to get worse for them and then half the population are in nice boats or yachts you know if you're the one being in a yacht living in a yacht weathering this storm I would really ask you to look inside yourself and be like if I was that single mom and, and stop shaming them for wanting to get back to work because frankly I think if anyone who says if one life doesn't get lost then it's worth it has never actually weathered a storm has never actually been in a position oh, where it can't uh, feed your kids has never actually been in a position yeah. where they're crawling their way up to the top they've been gifted a lot they've been given a lot and they can't actually relate i got i've got friends that just live in the stock market these people don't work they get all their income they haven't worked in years they they married a great rich husband which is great i have no issues with that by the way rich is good but they married a rich person and they're able to just play tennis and golf all day, which is great, good for them. But can they really relate to people that need to get back to work because they don't have that kind of cushion? They don't they don't live in that private yacht, you know? And to have empathy for people that want to work again. And and I and I don't like the fact that like I saw the view, because Del Rey, our, our our city actually did a little protest. Good for you, Del Rey. Um I know that they had a protest and so many people were so upset, like, um, go, go kill yourselves then. I, I don't, they're losing the whole idea of why we did this quarantine, which I completely agree with. We shut China travel off from the hot spots. I agree with that because that's smart. I well, understand. And I understand. Good. It's so important to be. Yeah. Let's 
I got I got to slow you down just a little bit because you're on the roll and you're Yeah, I you got more people to interview. I know. Well, thank you so much for having me though. And you know, I just feel like people need to like weigh their options out and be a little bit more empathetic to everybody else that is not does not have an income, you know, or those million people in, just in Florida alone that don't have any income because only 40,000 people have been paid out, you know. Wow. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you, Greg. You're so welcome. All right. We're going to get Karen on, right? Can I stay on? Yep. All right. Go, Karen. I'm Shelby. You're saying that I was having a conversation. Oops. Sorry about This is live radio. Someone I met a while back, I was having And citizens allow them to have more control you can guarantee that it will always go badly. And then you end up having to have that revolution. Um, another great example, the Philippines, my gosh, you so deserve to see this movie. Um, I think it's called the King. I got to look at this. The What is this called? Philippines King movie. Come on. This is an incredible movie to see the rise and fall of the, of the citizens. And it, it is such a great documentary, the Kingmaker. It's, it's, a sensational, sensational documentary, and it does not go where you think it's going to go. It's very interesting, um, and it really, in our lifetime, they have seen you know a complete, almost communistic type of a regime. You have the poorest of the poor people living in like dirt and filth, and even they had had it with the the regime that was in power, and they finally like overtook the government by stones, and you know just literally like thousands of them just storming their their White House. And then it just ends up being the same old thing. Nobody got out of it. You know, they went from this like ruins to trying to be a good thing. And, you know, it ends up that greed and power and money and, and infiltrating anyway. Um, so anyway, the, the Kingmaker, you really deserve to see it. But as far as the America goes, I'm hugely patriotic. Um, I'm I've traveled the world. I've always felt so blessed to be uh, able to travel the world and also be American and be born in this country. I do believe it's the greatest country in the world. And truthfully, uh, I think that we all have a responsibility to weigh our options and to not give up safety over freedom. So, you know, there, there's a lot of things going on right now that our nerve it's very nervous it's a nervous place to be allowing government control to this degree to say people can't go out and people can't run their businesses that they have worked so hard for i worked like my ass off for the last six months on this partnering with this company and my gosh like you can't imagine the devastation but can you imagine a restaurant that's been in business for six years or four years who's they've given everything and now they can't even serve and don't tell me these to-go orders are gonna cut it they're not that's cute but it's not gonna pay the bills restaurants are very very small margins and these loans that's another bunch of BS these the the small business loans they were gone in a minute and believe me when I tell you I know for a fact none of the people that I know that have true small businesses got any money or a callback there's nowhere to go for any follow-up you got what is it the steakhouse Ruth steakhouse got 20 million dollars are you kidding me is that even a small business and 20 million of like the third I don't know how much they had. Was it 300 million? I can't, I don't know the stats, but the, the, the banks are just giving loans to the bigger businesses. The small businesses are not even being paid attention to. That's not happening. And all, all of this fairness that they're going to give us money isn't great for economy anyway, because it's not government funded. The word government funded equals paid for by taxpayers. So every time you see government funded, just think, paid for by taxpayers, paid for by you if you work. The only people that win through this is if you don't work, if you figure out how to screw the system over, which a lot of people will do. I've lived in socialist type societies and I watch people screw the system constantly. It's not good for your for humanity, it's not good for the soul, but it it's good on paper, you know, to figure out how not to work so you can get government funded which is taxpayer funded um these free health care oh my gosh that drives me crazy there's no such thing as free health care it's taxpayer funded 
healthcare. So you know, the only people that get it for free are the people that don't work. And you start to realize, especially if you're trying to get ahead, which I always am, that it's very unfair, actually, especially when you meet people that you know. I mean, I, I met a whole group of people when I lived uh, in Newmarket. I love the girls I met there. The people I lived next to, though, they had all figured out a way not to work. We were the only people in that whole neighborhood that had jobs. Everyone else had a couple kids, at least two, because I guess that's the number you need to make more money. And then they had their baby daddies live with them, but they didn't say they lived with them, so they would remain single. And then they both had two households, so they would get money for their houses. And all I know is we were the only people that worked, and we were the only people that paid full rent. And the only thing we had extra besides 50 hours, 60 hour a week work weeks was a nicer inside. Our thing was redone. We had a car and we did have vacation time, but those are the only extras we had for working all that hard. So they used to laugh at us in a nice way. They're very nice people, but they used to laugh at us. Like, why do you work so hard? You know, just have another kid and you can just, you know, work the government. And it's like, wow, I don't want, I don't, I don't see you lusting for life. And, and why do we work so hard? Because I watch people like that. The only thing they're going to do their whole day is about getting more Bud Light and a few extra smokes. And that's no way to live a life. That's where's the, the, the gift. I know they have a gift. Everyone was born with a gift, but I'll never see theirs because they're never going to find it because they're just working on that little rat wheel trying to make sure that they don't have to work, you know? So these are very scary times to watch um, as someone that understands business uh, to know what the long term effect of all this is going to be is very, very nerve wracking because once you start getting people on this socialist mentality where they start to be getting money from the government, people don't want to go back to work. I talked with a friend yesterday. She has an insurance company. She had to lay someone off. They they make like 17, 18 bucks an hour while uh, someone else makes 25 that's been there longer. And the person on the uh, that was laid off makes just as much or more money than the person that she had to, that she kept on at $25 an hour. So it doesn't make sense for them to go back to work for $17 an hour. Now does it? So it's you're going to have we're going to have a society that's like well, let me see. I mean, does it make sense to work? Because I got all this money from the government, which is the people that are working tax money. So you, you start to, you know, if you look at this in a way bigger picture, rather than I don't want to go outside, I might catch the COVID, which you don't have to go outside. If you're that scared, don't go. But allow people that want to work, that have businesses, that, that actually have worked their whole lives on something that you're watching just disappear. Have some empathy for them. Have some empathy for those people that are single moms or that are just single, that don't have anyone else to depend on for money. And they want to work. They want to go out. They're not scared to go out. And don't shame them for saying that they're going to get you sick. Because if you are living on that beautiful yacht while they're in that dinghy, as I said, we're not in the same boat. We're just weathering the same storm then you can ride off into the sunset into your yacht. You don't have to go touch their dinghy, but let them work if they'd like to work because that's the American way. We are supposed to be able to do what we want. And, and it's not hurting you if businesses start running. It, if you feel that firmly that you don't want to go back, Stay in, in your stay in your house. Stay home about get your groceries delivered. You have the option to do that. When your money runs out, though, I wonder what you'll choose to do. So that's that's really my soapbox today is to just think about the people that don't have it good like you, that don't have what you have, and don't shame them for wanting to work again and allowing them to, to take the risk that they want to risk. That's important. All right. I'm Shelby. You're fabulous. Bye-bye for now.